Hi, my name is Thomas Johnson, and I'm the founder and CEO of Get Up and Get Fit Wellness and Fitness Coaching Concierge. I'm also a C-suite advisor and investor. You're listening to How May I Serve You, where I'm constantly on the quest to surround myself with the best coaches while learning how to better serve our executive clientele by asking them, how may I serve you? Today's show is sponsored by Get Up and Get Fit. Get Up and Get Fit will be providing students with, with textbooks and school supplies in Cambodia in honor of our guests today, as well as our philanthropic mission to impact at least 50,000 people. And today's guest is Per Schofers. Per, how you doing? I'm very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, and, and thank you for, for having me on the show. Of course, of course. So Per is a thought leader in everything pricing and how companies can use pricing to drive higher growth, sales and volume and profits. He is a sought after speaker for various conferences, appears regularly on podcasts and business radio shows and gets routinely quoted in the financial and business press. So this guy, Pierre, right here, he's the go-to guy. Pierre, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Like I said, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> so, Pierre, I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself, the two-minute version. Two-minute version is that, uh, as you may see from my, my weird name, I'm originally from Sweden. Uh, I started my first company in Switzerland, in Zurich. Okay. Uh, moved then to to the UK uh, and ran another company out of London for several years, and I came here to the States uh, in 1994 uh, to establish a, a division of a, a fairly large public company. And okay. um, since since then, I've been running several companies. Uh, and um, but um, 14 years ago, it was time for me to um, venture out completely on my own. I decided I was too old and too opinionated to have any kind of reporting structure above me, and um, and I devised a um, a process that that uh, that would make every pricing experiment a success, and mm. that's important because we had tried pricing in in these various companies that I've been running, and some of these experiments we did worked tre tremendously good, like. Um, Next quarter, um, sales are up 25, or revenues, I should say, are up 25%, uh, whereas others were complete disasters. And what I had learned in business school and could read what, about pricing was so academic and so theoretical that it didn't help us at all to understand why, why some experiments worked and others did not. So, so I, um, I uh, generated, I devised a process that will make every pricing experiment a success. Wow. Well, every pricing process a success those are yep. some huge words <laughs> so um Pip, i want us to go a bit backwards let's go a bit back um let's talk about your childhood all right um because mm -hmm. you mentioned you, you, you're from um you said sweden correct yes yeah so how how was it being in sweden you know let us know about your, your childhood well, I can tell you that I, I lived I, I grew up in a very in a very liberal um, um, household, okay. And um, I really could I could do essentially what I wanted when I wanted it, and um, and I could uh, and it was um, also a more um, you know at the time it was a very very much liberal society than society is today, mm -hmm. and and I, I think one of the things that it gave me is 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 that. Um, strength if you like that i'm i'm really not afraid of anything <laughs> and um uh, you know sometimes you get excited but um the um it, it was um I, I think i had a good childhood you know we we grew up just outside the capital stockholm and um, okay. um I, you know i we, we it, it is. It was suburbia that was, or it was countryside that was turning into suburbia. So, when I grew up, we had a um, the, the two places that we lived during my childhood. In both cases, we had uh, different farms just across the street, so you wow. could go out and, and 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 poke the cows if you wanted. <laughs> nice, nice. So you, you're definitely hands on. Okay. Yep. So, um, would you say your your childhood upbringing? prepare you to be the man you are right now especially oh, as an yeah. executive yeah i think so because it 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 gave me two things uh, it it gave me like i said that i'm i mean i'm 
I'm not afraid of anything. And I, this is something that I, um, I, 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 I very strongly um, saw when I moved from, from Europe to here to the U US was mm -hmm. how the companies that I encourage here in the US were very much driven by fear. The, there, mm -hmm. there were people who would, uh, they were, um, you know, they, they made decisions in their companies based out of fear of their own employment, I guess, or maybe not getting that next raise or something. And, and so they made decisions that were good for them personally, not necessary decisions that were good for the company. Mm, and, 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 and that was a huge um, insights that I, that I got. And uh, I've also, I didn't say that I've, I've set up a couple of companies in, in, in the far East as well. Mm. And, um, the the that it doesn't it doesn't exist in the same way uh, outside the U.S. Okay, okay, yeah, um, you know that's extremely interesting because you, you do see a lot of company filing bankruptcy and usually mm -hmm. they end up pocketing the money, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the CC yeah, folks true. end up pocketing the money. So um, I could definitely see that. So mm -hmm. let's dive into um your typical your typical week as an executive. What does it look like? Oh, I don't sleep very well. <laughs> so, I I typically I'm typically up working, um, you know, from from uh, I don't know from sometimes sometimes from from two a.m. sometimes from four a.m. Wow! Um, and sometimes like today, I actually could sleep in to five. Would you believe? Um, and and I set up my company to be virtual from day one. So, wow. um, I have I have people working for me uh, across the U.S. and and I have a um, an analytics team that uh, that are based in in Kosovo, in in Europe, and um, and we uh, we you know at the time fourteen years ago it was kind of unusual to have a virtual company, and and we were doing our best to hide that we were virtual, but um, obviously things have changed since then, and uh, and and especially after Corona, this is obviously completely. Um, acceptable if you like to be to be virtual okay so since um the coronavirus since covid has has have you seen an increase or have you seen a decrease like has there been any change in your, your operations the, yeah there's been i in general i think it's been an increase in business because um the the uh, i talk about pricing but pricing is more than just the price pricing is the whole decision landscape that is mm -hmm. influencing us when we make our purchase decision and obviously with covid that decision landscape changed um and and now as we're slowly coming out of covid it's gonna it's gonna change again so um so uh, companies smart companies come to me and say okay so this decision landscape has changed why don't we figure out how how it has changed uh, so so that we can leverage those changes and and better than our competition and and not only in terms of the pricing of our products or services but also how we market and how how uh, how 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 the um how our customers um perceptions and preferences may have changed during this time and let us leverage that into take our company to the next level okay so Pierre, what types of company approach you approach approach you guys um do you work with mid-sized company um most, companies? Yeah. mostly mid-sized companies but um uh, but we we've done work for the you know a few of the fortune 500s and We've done work for, and actually currently doing work for a couple of startups, pre-revenue oh, really? startups. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so the, the 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 trick is to have a a, a process when, when <laughs> something that some you know some some people come to me and say, do you have experience in just my industry? And sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Um, but the trick is that we have a process, and the process will apply for any company in any industry almost so it's it's all about process it's not about industry experience got it got it so per what got you started what, what got you started when it comes to um focusing on what you're working on right now with the pricing i mean what what turned you on onto that excitement you know uh, and the, the i i saw um i saw that the the Pricing means so much for the for the bottom line, and 
the, sometimes companies forget that it's the profits that drive a company. They they look at the they look at their their, their sales volume, and and they want to grow the sales volume. And sometimes they they drop prices to to grow their sales volume, and and they drop their profits. And if you don't have profits, you don't have um, you don't have the resources to 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 better your company. You don't have the resource for product development, for mm -hmm. for innovation, for um, for more and better marketing. So it's profits that drives every company's growth. And um, that is often, people kind of know it, but um, they need to be reminded about it. And mm. uh, it's not only about sales volume, it's also about profits and, and how you can leverage that profits and, and take, take the company to the next level and grow quicker and so forth. Okay, okay. So when a company approach you and asks like the um, necessary questions, right, about mm -hmm. in terms of how to get started, What's the process um, you put them through? Do you do an assessment? Um, do you go through their operations, or do you have like a do you have a specific um, a, a specific structure you follow, or is everything yeah, customizable? We, yeah, we we um, what we yeah it's 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 more like a typical consulting firm. You start with what is the what is the um, what is what, what's the current situation? What are the problems that you want to have solved? And and then we go further. How are we going to solve it? And the, the process I developed for 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 doing all this is, is based on a particular kind of online market research, and um, very different than than traditional market research, but but it's still market research. And um, and um, so we're going through that process. And and once we we have our results, we 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 help our clients to. Uh, market better to to have product development or service definitions that are more aligned with uh, um, the, the 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 market's needs and and obviously also pricing and we also uh, sometimes teach their salespeople if they have a sales force on how to defend pricing and how to gain pricing price uh, nice. pricing uh, power and with pricing power you can increase your prices at the same time as you increase your sales volume. Mm, nice, nice. Yeah, I know when it comes to um, comes to sales, um, a lot of a lot of folks tend to kind of deter away from um from that aspect because yeah. there's always some type of negotiation involved for the most part, right? Yeah. And the mere fact that you're able to teach the the sales team how to defend the price is so so critical. So so yep. critical. I, I think that's that right there is it's a gem a gem in itself and a value mm -hmm. add. Mm -hmm. So yep. normally I ask this question: What drives you? But you already mentioned the excitement. That's what drives you, right? The excitement. Yeah, it's excitement. Is it, <laughs> to make it to make a difference for for. I mean, people say they want to make a difference for society. Yeah, I want to make a difference for society, but I also want to make a difference for the the um, the companies that comes to me to the. Um, to the executives and the senior senior leadership in in a company that says, you know, we 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 tried a lot of things they didn't really work, and our company is stagnant, and we need to take ourselves to the, to the next level. So, um, and 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 helping that and and helping people is is is, <laughs> is really one of the key things I I I, I love to do. Um, obviously, I've been around the block quite a while, you know, so. So I have a little bit of experience, and I love to share my experience. I, 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 I love to be the the that person who, who makes a difference, and and you're that is really what drives me. There you, you know? go. You know, you're the you're the veteran, man. You have you have a plethora <laughs> of expertise and experience to share, which is which is amazing. So a little bit. How do your clients normally contact you? Is it is it via um is it virtual is it via online is it via ads or word of mouth no, no I, I do a lot of you asked me earlier well, how does my my week look like and and i do a lot of um, uh, networking a lot of uh, online networking um in in fact i i counted here the other day and i do between 12 and 14 hours a week cool. um, in, <laughs> in in various networking groups and so forth and Part of that is is that giving. I, I want to share my experience and see if I can help because in those in those groups, people ask questions. I mean, how can I? They ask me how 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 can I do this better? And do you have a solution to this problem that I have? And many times, I can at least um, um, help them think around the problem 
um, and, and, and so forth. And you also, um, which I, um, again, going back to the, um, how does my week look like? And since, since your, your, your interview here is really about staying fit, um, I do, um, I do brisk walks every morning. Uh, about Great. four and a half mile, okay? And um, during those brisk walks to have something to do, you know, I, I count the number of rabbits that I see here in, really? the, I mean, the Los Angeles area. <laughs> and so sometimes I have a three rabbit walk and sometimes I have a 12 rabbit walks, you know? And, um, and counting the rabbits are good because I think when there's, when there's, when there's rabbits around, uh, there are no coyotes around, you know. So. <laughs> no, it's funny because being, being being a New Yorker, I would have never even imagined there were rabbits in LA. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I think of LA, I just I just think of just um, for some reason I just I think of just sidewalks and you know and just yeah. streets, you know. But um, okay, yeah. now I know. Count rapidly. Yeah, that's, 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 that's interesting. <laughs> they're, they're surprisingly in rural areas, and although this is this is I live in suburbia, but um, but it's still a um, there's a there's a lot of rabbits around. So um, and actually we have a rabbit that lives in our backyard. So that we oh okay so, okay. And, so you know. when when it comes when it comes to um, other executives, right? What do you what mm -hmm. do you believe? an executive of a company needs to do in order to drive the company forward, especially being a person that specializes in price? Well, um, I mean, in general terms, I think that as, as, as the executive in a company, uh, you set the tone of the whole organization. And um, as, 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 as the executive, the, the way that I'd like to, to do this is, is, is to give um, give people um, give people a responsibility, and um, the 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 um, one of the things proverbs, if you like, that I, I really love is 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 this guy who um, another Swede who was um, um, at one point he was he was head of uh, Scandinavian Airlines, mm -hmm. but um, he, he said this that that um, allow people to make. Uh, make decisions at all levels in the organization because, and he said, mistakes can almost always be corrected, but time lost not making a decision is lost forever. Mm. Mm, I like and that. I found that so insightful and it's one of the, um, the key aspects of, of how I see, how I see leadership. It doesn't mean that you allow <laughs> too many mistakes. Um, then obviously, it's the wrong person for 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 the job, or or or, or for. It doesn't mean that it may be the wrong person in the wrong position in in the job, um, but allow people to make mistakes, allow people to learn, allow people to take responsibility for their own actions, and um, uh, let me give you an example of 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 the the opposite to this, and I'm not going to say any names here, but um, this was. Uh, um, a friend of mine who who ran a, a, a division of a one of the largest computer companies in the world, and um, that was such a fear driven company that nobody um, under his executive vice president um, uh, title dared to make a decision. So his workday from eight a.m. to six p.m. every day was uh, fifteen minute meetings. Um, all day, back to back, with people who came to him for him to make a decision. <laughs> you know, because they didn't dare to do the decision. Because they, again, they said, "Well, I may lose my job if I make a mistake, or uh, mm -hmm. maybe I'm not getting that promotion if I make a mistake, or maybe I'm not getting that raise if I make a mistake." Yeah, so. that's a lot of that's a lot of micromanaging right there. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> and 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 so 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 he took on his shoulders um, as the as the head of that division to 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 make all the decisions, um, not because that he wanted, but because the people um, that reported to him uh, simply didn't dare to make decisions. Isn't yeah. that amazing? Yeah, that's that's a that's a lot to um, for one person to handle. 
So, yep, it is. so per, are you currently working on any new projects you'd like to share with us? Um, well, I mean, the, the, these projects are they're they're sort of proprietary to to our clients, but um, we currently we're working with one of the largest uh, white goods manufacturers in the world. But I, we're also working with a company doing um, data security using blockchain. Okay. Um, we, we're working with a company uh, doing home testing for for various diseases. Um, one one company is is um, um, is actually coming out with a um, an, an age defying supplement that is going to add years to your life. And so it's all it's all all, all different uh, all different companies. Okay, it seems like you guys are keeping busy, You're keeping yes, very very busy. busy. Okay, yeah. so per. If someone were to inquire about your services or just want to connect with you, where can they find you? Well, the best way to find me is is you can, I mean, um, one can reach out to me. I, again, I know I have a weird name, but hopefully there's going to be, um, it's going to be there in the in, in the notes to this. Well, um, well. You, you can always reach out to showforce.com, uh, my website or my company's website, I should say. Um, or send me an email to pair at showforce.com okay. um, or phone 818-512-9133. Nice, nice. So, um, so Per, do you mind spelling your name for the listeners? I'll, I'll yes, I will. Right my, first name is, my first name is, is P-E-R, um, and my last name is S-J-O-F-O-R-S. It makes perfect sense if you're a native Swede like me, but it's hard for, for English speaking people. Yes, uh, us Americans are, you know, we're so biased in the way we look at things. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yeah. wrong with that, you know. Well, Per, yeah. th thanks for coming on today. You know, it's, it's always a pleasure. And everyone everyone listening right now, Per has already provided value to me. He actually walked me through my, my pricing structure and I've already received value from him. He's an amazing, amazing person and you all should you, go, you should all connect them and you will benefit from his advice from his experience and, and his knowledge so do so all right so well, thanks for coming on once again and last well, but not least how may i serve you <laughs> thank you much thomas it, it was a pleasure to 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 be with you on this on the show and i i trust that the audience find find value in uh, in in what we discussed so yes indeed yes indeed Thanks again, everyone, for, for coming on. Thanks for lending us your ears and your eyeballs. And make sure to tune in to next week's episode. Take care. All right. Thank you much, everybody.